Yo, what's good, everybody? It's your boy BQ and TW with episode number two of the Cool Factor podcast here yeah. at the Impact Lounge. We got a lot of good feedback last week. Everyone seemed to enjoy the show. And as I said before, we're going to work on tightening up and all that good stuff. But I think the show came out pretty good. Everyone seemed to enjoy it. If it's your first time here, if it's your first time listening, the Cool Factor is a we're not going to be reviewing Impact. It's not going to be a long review. Now, there are some podcasts that do long reviews and segment by segment by segment. That's cool. That's fine. That's uh, go not, enjoy not, those. Yeah, I'm not we're not putting that down by any means, but uh, you know, and I I've done that for years myself. But for the sake of being different, trying something new, we're just really going to hammer some uh, some of the hard points, some of the <laughs> hammer some of the points hard. There we go. Uh, <laughs> that happened on the show. Uh, we're we're not gonna you know try not to draw it out too much and uh we're just gonna jump right into it uh, if it's your first time here so please subscribe and uh let's do this let's get into this let's uh let's jump right in we're gonna talk about the opening of the show here real quick uh f- you know we talked about last week when when the ma- when the champion comes out to open the show you know we say when they're wrestling it doesn't you know We feel like it's not the right way to present the champion, but I think kicking off the show with the champion speaking is a different story. Um, You know, we wanted to hear what Eric Young had to say. And, you know, at first he starts talking TW and uh, again, it's coming to me, you know, I'm like, God, there's no one in the crowd, you know, but then as he's continuing, continuing, even when Alicia came out, which I thought she did a really good job uh, with her part. I felt like they made it work, you know, there's certain promos like last week we're talking about Tennille Dashwood came out and it was like Mm. so obvious how empty the arena was. Right. Um, But with this one, like they, they really seem like they made it work and I thought it was a great opening promo. And now we're kind of getting into this Eric young era as champion. He's saying that he wants to make bound for glory just as important or more important than slam reversary. So, you know, Give me your thoughts on this this opening segment. You know, I, I'm pretty sure you enjoyed it just like I did up to a certain point, of course. We'll get to that. Yeah, so listen, I, I, I totally agree with you, right? Like putting the world title in the opening match tells me that it's not important. But having your world champion start off the show, meaning that if people are tuning in at 8 o'clock, he's the first thing you want people to see. That's the first thing. When it comes to storytelling, you're saying this is my A story, right? So you put your world champion on camera. First things first, you let everybody know that this is the main story that we're telling. So I thought it was, plus EY coming off a championship win, right? It makes sense for him to be the first person that we hear from to start the show. So that totally made sense. Now, in terms of the promos, right? And you 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 have some um, some wrestlers and wrestling shows where, like you said, they're just working for a pop that's not there. But I think you know with with this promo we saw EY and Alicia, they're just working to talk to each other. They're just working to convey the emotion of this this you know you bastard you took my husband out and you know you even made it so he can't play with our little one and uh you know and then the best part of the promo ey looks her right in the face and goes i don't care <laughs> and i was like man you an a-hole man like that was a, that was great and i thought he totally nailed that i thought he nailed that so um that was a really good segment man like you know, you established that EY is a bastard. EY is a bastard. And this is somebody who you want to see get beat because he just does not care. You know, when Slammiversary came and they were teasing a surprise entrant, I, I was telling people it's going to be a baby face because you don't have a heel. A heels don't show up and they're not the surprise. And that just, right. it doesn't work that way. Right. But what they did was they actually with the two surprises bringing Swan out as a baby face, it made it work to bring EY out. So I think everything they've done with EY from the, from the jump has been good. They didn't force them into a baby face role. Uh, would thank God, you know, they're, they're they needed a, that really good top heel and yeah. he's, he's really doing that. Um, I thought Alicia sounded really good here too, because all the ACE Austin stuff and everything, you know, people were saying, oh, man, Alicia's acting, you know what I mean? And yeah. I felt in Wrestle House that her acting, like, really stepped up. <laughs> and then she did this promo um, that what sucked was that her mic and then the one Tommy Dreamer used, I guess that was the same mic. I don't know if you could hear the uh, the, the quality was uh, distorted. 
a little bit. I didn't even notice that. I didn't even notice oh, that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you go back and listen, it, it was pretty distorted. Yeah. Um, so for me, it took away for me a little bit, but, you know, maybe, maybe you didn't hear it, so maybe others didn't, but – I, I thought it was really excellent. And again, that I don't care. Like that was just, right. <laughs> that, that's captivating. Like that's, yeah. you know, um, Tommy dreamer comes out and it's funny. I tweeted before the show, like he's probably going to start building his bound for glory match tonight, which, <laughs> you know, um, I've been You're talking about wrong. it. You're I've been talking wrong. about it since, <laughs> since 2018, that Tommy dreamer <laughs> is main eventing impact shows you know and that's just like bananas to me um uh, i was you know i was told by someone at impact that the numbers are good when dreamers involved whether it's youtube the ratings i mean and, and i would that's... believe that i i told you um you know talking about this uh probably a couple of months ago you know there's one time when don Callis was on the busted open show and everybody that called in just wanted to talk to him about ecw and so, I mean, look, it's a thing, you know, it's a thing. It is what it is. So, you know, listen, milk it if it works. Me personally, I appreciate everything Tommy Dreamer brings to the table. Tommy Dreamer cuts a great promo. Yeah, like, he was great again. I just, I, whenever I see Tommy Dreamer, I'm always thinking to myself, shouldn't somebody else, couldn't somebody else be used in this spot? That's just what I what I'm what I'm thinking when I see Tommy Dreamer there. Um, and that's no diss to Tommy Dreamer because Tommy Dreamer does it well. Like he does wrestling well. He conveys the emotion well. He gets the point across. He gets you to the next thing, right? Like he talks you into the match or you know or the or the next segment or whatever. Like he does it so well. He's got it down. But it's like you you have no. There, there's, there's no part of you that thinks Tommy Dreamer is going to win the world title at the end of the night. You know right, what I mean? Right. Zero. There's no part of you that thinks that there's any anything going forward in watching Tommy Dreamer. And again, Tommy Dreamer is dope. Like if you are just sh- strictly like grading him on the quality of stuff he does, right? Like mm-hmm. if you look at his matches, his matches are well put together. You know what I mean? Like, his promos are dope. Like he does really, he does a really good job, but it's just that, I don't know, man. It's just that you, there's nothing new, nothing fresh, nothing. Uh, when you see Tommy dreamer, it's like, okay, he's just filling in, filling in, filling time, filling space, whatever. And it's just, I don't know. It's just, it doesn't really, you know what I mean? Like it just, it, it feels like a dead end whenever I see Tommy dreamer. Right. And there's, there's, I think there's some instances where it worked like this one. I didn't, roll my head, roll my eyes and back of my head as much because the whole head. Yeah. (laughs) Because I, because, uh, the James Harden, (laughs) like I thought it, uh, I thought it worked for this, you know, like you said, there's times where I'm like, man, they really couldn't find anyone else. You know, I think of all the Tessa Blanchard stuff where he would come and save her. And I'm like, dude, they could have taken some jabron mid Carter from the back and automatically, elevated them just by coming out and helping Tessa. You know what I mean? But that's, yeah. that's neither here nor there. Uh, the, the promo was really good. My favorite part of it was, and this, this hit me, this like really hit. He said, you know, as someone who's just been covering impact for so long, going through the ups and downs, he said, when you left, there are people who chose to stay. Right. You, you yeah. know what I mean? And, and he, he painted that picture yeah. and I'm, I might be paraphrasing a little, I know exactly what he said. Yeah. Um, I mean that that like really hit home for me, and they said yeah. now you just come in here, you're the world champion, and this and that, you know. So for he, I think that really further elevated just the heel persona for for him. Where yeah. Like, just like dude, you you left us. You you. You're right. He was but the you, champion, you know what, though, like, king of the mountain, champion, and left. Part yep. so part part of the thing though about this whole thing is like, you know, they could they could have been telling this story over the course of like a week. And they be like more anticipation building into a match. Cause I feel like a promo like that deserves to sit and you know what I mean? Work its way around social media. Let people talk about it, let people tweet about it and be like, yeah, EY did leave. You know what I mean? And and so then you could hate him even more as and you anticipate this match coming up. But um, you know, I don't know. It's just, it's one of those things where it was a great again, a great promo because it invoked that emotion and it, it invoked just another reason why EY is a bastard. EY, you bastard. And he, you know, and you just want to see him get beat. So, you know, again, Tommy Dreamer does a great job. He just doesn't, you know, just doesn't get me excited. You, you know what I would have 
I thought would have been cool if he really did pile drive Alicia, much like Sammy Callahan did to uh, Melissa. Yeah. I mean, that was, that was, it, they did a really good job building like heat between Sammy and Cage for that. And that was a big, yeah, you know, true. like, and she's not even a trained wrestler. Alicia is like, she could have taken the pile driver. So that yeah. would have been, I, I think that would have, that, that would have been cool. But I think at the same time, you only do that if you're moving forward, forward with Eric and Eddie. Right. Because if, if you do that, now Eddie has to come back. Yeah. Now, because you, if you do that, you Eddie can't just show up back here one day in a tag team match. You know, <laughs> like no, he has to be coming for your neck. Like the next time he sees you, uh, if you pile drive his wife. So you, like you said, you only do that if you intend to keep going with Eddie and EY. And obviously, we don't think that's where they're going. So it, it made sense to not do that. The, the only part though that he said that was just like, Oh, here we go again. He's like, I don't care what kind of match it is. Old school, extreme, hardcore. All now all these matches are exactly the same. Let's, right. let's not get it twisted. <laughs> old school, extreme, hardcore, no disqualification. Street fight. Game. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> like seriously. Uh, now we, we already talked about the, this off the year. I didn't watch the match just cause I didn't uh, get to it yet. Was it a extreme rules? Yeah, was, yeah uh, of course, of course. Yeah, <laughs> it was. Um, and it, you know, it was, it was, you know, it was standard, standard match. You had yeah. two excellent pro wrestlers in there. You know what I mean? And by the way, I don't mean excellent pro wrestlers. What many people mean when they say excellent pro wrestlers means you do ten backflips, young and, bucks, yeah. You know, tope suicidas a match, and how many hurricane riders can you do? Like, no, that's not what I call excellent professional wrestler. Excellent professional wrestler is people that can tell me a story through professional wrestling so you had two people who are excellent professional wrestlers and you know they did they, they, they had a good match it was fine it was fine it was fine but like you know for me the story is everything so if i have no thought that this could be going somewhere if i don't think you could really be winning the world title or you know what i mean like it just i i i watch it kind of you know half-assed a little bit you know what i'm saying because i don't really anticipate that it's going anywhere so you know so that that took a little bit out of it for me but you know it was fine the match was fine um ey won of course um he hit tommy over the head with the hockey mask and then he gave him the pile driver and um then of course he kept you know trying to brutalize him after the match and then rich swan came out rich swan came out and attacked ey but it was weird to me because Rich Swan came out and he was on two crutches and he had a walking boot. So I was like, <laughs> how are you attacking the person that injured you right now with two crutches and a walking boot? And a wheelchair so too. He's got it all. Weird. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Just, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it really displayed his athleticism. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> a one-legged man in the asking contest for real. <laughs> yeah. Did he? So did he actually? I mean, he just hit him with the – I imagine he probably hit him with Yeah, the, he hit him with the crutch and, you know, swung it and, you know, EY ran off. And, um, you know, obviously this, there's going to be more of this going forward. And so, like I said, I thought it was weird that Rich Swan showed up still obviously injured and he's attacking EY because I'm like, you can't have a match like this. But my thought is that this is going to, you know, slowly progress with him getting better – to lead to them having a match in Bound for Glory, which is, I think, at the end of October. So, so we, got, we got a few weeks to go. What is that, like eight weeks away? Yeah, something so, like that, um, seven, eight weeks. So. Yeah, yeah. So that's plenty of TV time, plenty of time to build, plenty of time to get that, get that cast off and, uh, and, 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 and get to a point where they actually are able to have a match. Right, and you fill in the blanks with Eddie. Um, you know, and I've talked, we're going to move on to something else here in a second. I've talked about in the past, like they got to find something for Alicia to do. That's not being Eddie's wife, you know, know, uh, they got to find something engaging for her to do. So um, I do think that's a bound for glory main event. A lot of people are saying, Oh, Eddie's going to get his rematch. Like when does bound for glory have a rematch as the main event? That's going to draw people. And that doesn't, they don't do that. They don't ever do that. So we're going to hop into another topic here. And this was a topic we talked on last week as well, along with Eric Young and Eddie and everything. It's Tennille Dashwood. We're going to hop, we're going to hit, we're going to hit this real quick. I have been saying this. I'm going to take credit for it too, damn it. I've been (laughs) saying this for at least six or seven months now. And I said it last week on our first episode. 
why don't they tap into the Instagram model that is Tendil Dashwood? Right. You know, we talked about she's got all these followers, doesn't promote wrestling too because she's two completely different people. Like, why don't right. you tap into that right. and make it work? And then there's a thing where uh, Jordan Grace was looking for, and I got to give props because normally Impact, if they said, let's go ask her now, Tennille would be standing like 20 feet away. You know what I mean? Right. They actually had her go look for her. <laughs> She'd be just, happen to be standing like two feet off the camera, like just playing with her nails. Yeah, oh, yeah exactly. Oh, I standing there doing an interview. <laughs> Which I've always hated, dude. If I was a wrestler, I wouldn't just be hanging out in the right. dreary backstage hall area, just sitting on a, you know, yeah. the, I mean, come on, dude. So anyway, uh, they go find her. Caleb Conley comes out. I He posted on his Instagram a, a picture you know, professional picture with the impact logo and said, watch impact tonight. And he had that outfit on and everyone was like, Oh, he's, he's going to be the leader of cancel culture. I was like, I don't think that's what he's dressed like. And right. I don't think there's a cancel culture anymore. There's no right. one to lead. <laughs> um, and Caleb with a K said, he's the, the photographer. And I'm like, Bam, like they're doing it. They're finally pulling the trigger on that. Yeah. Um, so did you got any, you got any thoughts? On, I was, I was really excited no, I, about I, it. I thought it was really well done. Honestly, like from a, from a stylistic standpoint, I thought it was cool because like right when Jordan Grace is kind of standing there, she's like, and when can I talk to Tennille? And then they just did like a little cut in of like, uh, it was just like three or four like shots of Tennille having like pictures taken over. She's like just posing, posing, posing. And it said like, she'll be here next week. And then they come right back to the scene of them talking and then she's like well all right and so yeah, right. <laughs> yeah I, I felt like stylistically that was a that was a fun little thing to do a fun little way to present that but you're right it gives her some personality where otherwise there was none and also it's a nice way to shift gears with jordan grace right because you um you know she's kind of she came out last week and didn't she conceded to Deanna Perrazzo a little bit. Like, she's like, you know, you did a great job, but your title reign's not going to last. So that's basically saying, you know, I'm not forgetting about you. She's basically trying to re-challenge her before Tanil Dashwood came out and cut her off. Now, here's the thing. Do you have Jordan Grace lose to Tanil Dashwood? You're trying to build Tanil Dashwood. Do you have her beat Jordan Grace, who just lost two excellent matches right, on right. pay-per-view and TV? I feel like Jordan can handle the losses. You know, there's certain wrestlers they can lose, and it works. And then there's certain wrestlers who lose, and they're jobbers. Like, right. I, I think she could – you know, she's got a strong enough push up to this point. She's always been presented pretty important. So, yeah, that's a good uh, – you know, that's something I always feel when I watch, like, the AEW pay-per-views. Like, I never know – there's a lot of those matches. I'm like, I don't know who the hell's going to win to right. where I might watch, you know, obviously I don't watch it anymore, but some of the old WWE ones, I'm like, mm -hmm. I always knew who was going to win a matches. Absolutely. I still do these Absolutely. pick them, pick them challenges to pick all the winners. And I, yeah. I get almost all of them. Right. And I don't even yeah. watch the program. So uh, <laughs> yeah. that, yeah, that's one of those fuses. Kind of like, hmm, I want, you know, yeah. I wonder who's going to win. I got a challenge for you next week, dude. Um, well, you probably don't watch explosion, right? No. Never, ever. So, okay. So, not last week. Josh Matthews called it. The two previous weeks, I don't know if you heard this, Matt Stryker called Explosion mm. with Don Callis. Mm. I, haven't, I haven't listened to him yet at all. And you remember, it's only one match for Explosion, so it's not difficult homework. You've been saying Matt Stryker's on Impact's payroll for a while now, and I haven't seen him on Impact TV. I think I saw him he on was, Impact TV like once. He was on TV a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, uh, the good the good brothers backstage. Right. I, I watched the reality show that he was in. Did you hear he was in a uh, labor of love show? No, I didn't it just see that. it just ended. <laughs> like it was you know a bachelorette style program. Cause right, I really right, right. Always been really into that uh, bachelor sure. bachelorette <laughs> shit. You know, guilty pleasure. But uh, it was based it was based on um, the woman was 40, mm. 40, 41, real hot, and she was but she wanted to have a kid oh, you know, because so the winner was supposed to pretty much commit to a relationship and starting a family. <laughs> so striker was on the show and I was really cheering for him. She liked him. And then one episode, he's just becomes, he's just an asshole. All of a sudden they, they were doing a, uh, a little exercise or something guy. And he didn't want to participate in it. So yeah. oh, it's a stupid, you know what I mean? And then he yeah, got, yeah. he got the boot, but it, it was really funny seeing him in that setting. And I've actually seen him 
I met him once in the airport years ago in St. Louis. I was uh, picking up a troop who just came back from a deployment uh-huh. and, and I was in uniform and everything. And, and all of a sudden Stryker walks by, I was like, Oh, excuse me. Can I shake your hand? He's like, can I shake your hand? You know, so I was in uniform and everything. Well, yes, you can. Yeah. Well, sure. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to be, I'm actually going to raw tonight. You know, this is years yeah. ago. And, uh, uh, then when my troop came, I was like, Hey, you know, can you take, you know, I gave her my phone. I'm like, can you take a picture of us? So, uh, yeah. we got, we got a picture. Um, I'm about 50 pounds skinnier there <laughs> looking like a twig, but, um, yeah. So, we're going to get back to this. So uh, I, I want to talk about this next week. Your thoughts on Stryker calling the two shows and, and how you feel it's different. And I'm going to listen to it the first time too. Well, Stryker, wait, well, Stryker is he going to call uh, Impact so, next week? You know, Lewis was talking about this on his podcast to where he thinks maybe they're giving it a test run. Okay. It's possible Josh couldn't do it. And I hope, I hope they're actually giving it a test run, not – him filling in for Josh because he was sick or something like that. Okay. Uh, you know, but from what people were saying on the, uh, in the YouTube comments, like they really enjoyed it. And then when Josh came back, it felt like a real step down. Is explosion up on YouTube. It's on. Cause I, I canceled the network. I don't, I was like, yo, uh, why am I paying $8 for this? Everybody? I was like, there's no value there's, to this network. Dude, I pay for it to support impact, but there's no, yeah. there's no value to pay $8 for. Right. Yeah. I mean, no, there is no. Uh, for for a free app to old episodes and shit, it's great. Right. It's not, but there's no value at free bucks. No. But Explosion, I think, is free on it though. Okay, on the free. Oh, is it? Okay, I'll check it out. Yeah. So people have heard me talk about the the commentary a lot. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> you know, and that's another thing I, I'm taking credit. I like credit. the Josh Matthews Madison rain pairing though. I, I, I think don't they mind have it. good chemistry. They have yeah. good chemistry. Um and um. The thing about Madison Rain that I like so much is I don't feel like she's trying. I don't feel like she's like trying to be, you know, a personality that she's not. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it just, it, it sounds just like she's, you know, just like they're just sitting down, like talking and like, you know, she craps on him and, you know, stuff like that. And I think they have like a good, fun dynamic. You know, Josh Matthews, his style. It is what it is. You know what I mean? Like, this is little time. It's, it's just a lot of stuff I just don't like. You know what I mean? And this guy is the world champion. You know what I mean? Like, or every, I just, time, every time a heel wins, he steals yeah. a victory. Every time. Yeah, yeah man. It's just, ah, you know, whatever. But I think as a group, though, the two of them, I think, are actually pretty good together. Yeah. Um, I think Madison. Maybe we switch out to Madison Rain and Josh Stryker. Matt Stryker. Yeah, yeah dude. I would like that. <laughs> I, I think, actually, Madison does a good job. I don't. I'm not real big on the bad comedy dynamic where the, the inside yeah. jokes and stuff. There's some people who right. find that charming or whatever. I don't, uh, that that's what I, I, I don't really like. Um, I think they, they definitely like kayfabe the relationship though, because yeah. he'll, he'll be like, well, we're a great pair. And she'd be like, no, no way. Never. <laughs> but she's funny in the way she delivers it. And she's like quick. Yeah. He, he asked a stupid ass question. Um, this episode, <laughs> And and she almost like calls him out like real world like, why would you ask me that? Like she says that kind of stuff. But there was yeah. something, man. I wish I could remember what it was, but it was just this stupid comment. And uh, the, I think the funny she the most she made me laugh was like, he, uh, Triple XL was out there. He's like, I bet they would eat a whole buffet. You do you like buffets, Madison Rain? And she's just like, um, look at me. <laughs> you know, dude. I mean, she's she's quick, dude. So um, yeah. this is another thing I'm taking credit for. So when they had their first set of tapings together, they were wearing the same outfit every single week. And I was talking about for us internet wrestling fan, the internet right. wrestling community, we know it's a tape show, but right. there's an older audience and a younger audience that doesn't, and then it's right. confusing, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I always said, I said like those are those little details they should tighten up. And, mm-hmm. uh, again, I'm taking credit, but, um, Madison, I've noticed every single week now has a different dress. Josh is wearing the same thing. Uh, today he I, had, I'm pretty sure they take their part from their house. Like they just, they have like an impact background. Yeah, I'm sure of it. Yeah. They just go in front of and, and just, just do their part of the show. So, I mean, right. It's just a little bit of effort. You know what I mean? Just a little bit of effort. Yeah. And in, in fairness, like, you know, they do deserve credit because 
this is stuff we actually talk about that they've done a better job at. Like we talk like stuff like Wrestle House. Yeah. Like I said, you know, that's the type of content that we praise NWA for. That's the type of content that, you know, we would love for AEW to do. You know what I mean? Like that's the type of content. If it was on WWE Network, everyone would be talking about it. Like, and, and then they, they go out and they start doing it. So little stuff like that, man, like just putting in the effort to, you know, make it feel like, don't just treat us like we the bottom bitch. Like, you know what I mean? Like we know, like y'all know we, we're the fans who just going to be here no matter what y'all we're not going to leave and so you know so you just do anything for us you know what i mean like no right. put in some effort okay buy me some flowers okay take me, take yeah, me yeah. Out to eat. romance <laughs> me a little little yes, foreplay something a little bit yeah you know I mean? warm up the oven a little i mean come on exactly. god but no I, I really think for the most part their pairing is good i I enjoy it. I enjoy it way more than I did with Don Callis. I mean, way, 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 way more. So um, let's move on. Let's talk about something else here. The X division. Um, not so much the Rohit Raju side of things, but just there's a couple of couple, excuse me, couple of former X division champions that aren't just aren't looking good right now. Mm. Um, Willie Mack is, I'll, I'll give I'll let you talk about the other Willie Mack is the one that's, you know, coming to my mind right now to where, he was just the X division champion. Right. And he has lost twice now. Right. Granted by cheating, but he's lost twice to a guy who has not won on television in a singles match in years. Right. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? And as I was watching this episode, whether it was the good brothers standing tall at the end or not the end, but at the tag match. And it was, it reminded me when I was a kid, and I used to buy the wrestling figures. I know there's mm. grownups who still buy them. Yeah. And I used to wrestle with them. And whoever my newest figure was mm. won all the matches. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you book like impact. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I was saying. Like I might get the new ravishing Rick Rude. He was like this, had to, you know, put someone in a headlock. <laughs> but the minute I bought him, dude, he was beating the macho man, the warrior, yeah. Hogan. You, you know. <laughs> Man, that's what I feel when I watch the show, man. I'm like, man, it just feels like their guys are getting pushed to the side. But Willie Mack does not feel like someone who just won the X Division Championship. Nope. I feel like no one's got momentum in that division because even Rohit as the champion lost, 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 lost up to it. They gave him no momentum up to that moment. They rushed the storyline with Chris Bay. That could have, They could have stretched that out quite right. a bit and done something with it. Um, and then Chris Bay... You know, I missed the match with TJP. So, uh, you know, I missed the last couple of matches tonight. But I know you got similar thoughts on uh, Chris Bay and how yeah, he's been presented. I, so, right, similar thing. And this, this kind of goes back a little bit to what I was saying last week about, like, what are you doing with Taya, right? Like, she was, you know, longest reigning knockouts champion in company history. And, you know, and then you have her just keep losing and losing and losing to Kylie Ray. And I love Kylie Ray, but, I mean, like, at what point are you just shitting on the person that was your longest reigning knockouts champion, right? And so similarly, we see the same thing with like Willie Mack. Now, you know, you can argue whether or not Willie Mack was ever in the fans' eyes like a champion, like a championship quality uh, uh, guy, you know what I mean? Uh, you, you can argue that whether he was or not. Um, but certainly since he's lost it, what has he done, right? Like, he's just been losing and, you know, cutting his same, you know, plotting style promos. And it's just not a great look, man. It's not a great look for Willie Mack, to be honest with you. Um, he needs, like, a manager or a tag team partner to accentuate what he does well, which is the in-ring stuff. Really dope, you know, um, um, you know dynamic in-ring performer. But as far as like talking and being a standalone personality, that's just not his strength. You know, that's not his strength. And he's kind of feeling a little bit exposed right now. But by the same token, I feel like it's in the hands of the people who tell the stories to say that this guy was a champion. He's still a big deal. Right. Um, same thing with like Chris Bay. Now, I wouldn't say Chris Bay is been like necessarily diminished, but so he had a match with TJP, which was a good match, right? This was not a match where he came out looking bad. But just looking at the results here, you know, three weeks ago, he was the X Division champion. Now he's basically pretty much close to being out of the title picture, right? Because uh, the because Rohit said that he would give TJP Chris Bay's shot if Chris Bay 
lost to, uh, if, if TJP beat Chris Bay, which he did. So, you know, they made sure to, like, you know, show Chris Bay's face at the end of it and be like, yo, he's in shock. So this might not be the end of Chris Bay in this story. Um, matter of fact, I'd be willing to bet that it's not the end of Chris Bay in this story. But you do have to wonder, you know, what's to become of him now, right? Because he was just the champion, and now – you know, he, he, he could very well be on the outside looking in of the whole X Division title picture. So um, it's just, that's just a little confusing in terms of, you know, in terms of the booking. Now, as far as who he lost to, I have no problems with that. TJP is super duper dope. Right? Like he's, he's super duper dope. Um, yeah. Like even some of the little stuff that I've seen him do as far as like his workouts and stuff, like he's just a very interesting type of cat that like they should highlight and feature more of him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and, and, and in the ring, like just some of the stuff he does is just dope. Like you could just, you could just cut up uh, like highlight packages of his moves and you know what I mean? The stuff he does like, like, yo, he's a really, he does submissions. You know what I mean? Like, yo, he is a really good all-around performer he could cut good promos like i don't know what it is you know what i mean maybe it's maybe he has a bad attitude you know what I mean? Maybe <laughs> it's because he's not like a, a super duper muscly guy but i mean tjp really is like the whole package so um so there's no there's no shame in chris bay losing to tjp because he's a world-class uh pro wrestler like totally um so it's just the simple fact of you were just the champion and now we just see you like losing. So um, I don't know. It's just, it's just, it's a very, you know, curious way to book somebody. I feel. There's always a solution for when there's no storylines in the X division or no one has momentum or no one's over and it's a multi-man match. Yeah. <laughs> just, I was going to say ultimate X match. <laughs> yeah. Throw, throw six dudes in there and, and, uh, <laughs> That's probably the direction they're going. You know, I still think this uh, leaked Bound for Glory card, uh, I'm 50-50 on it. Yeah. I feel like that's that's where they're going with it. If you look at the, uh, you know, the tag team match, we're going to talk about that here. Let's talk about that right now, actually. Mm. But if you look at the tag team match, the way that ended, it's online with, you know, some of the rumors that came out. But yeah, let's talk uh, the Rascals real quick. Mm. These guys... I pointed this out in the past that, and I know I repeat myself a lot, but we always have new listeners and that's the reason right. I do it. That the North as, as champions didn't actually beat the whole division. They just beat the rascals a bunch of times. And then, yeah. <laughs> you know, and when they made this match and the rascals had another title shot, I'm like, how many times can they lose? We knew they weren't going to win. Right. How many times can the rascals lose a title shot because then the, the, then it wears off you know what i mean like you mm -hmm. you you if they ever were to win it at some point there's a there's a story an underdog story you can tell to a certain point right but then at some point you're just a loser you, you, you're right exactly um that's what i'm feeling like with these guys and even though they're all standing tall at the end i felt like that was just uh they had the rascals in there just because they were in the match but i'm like dude right. next week they're gonna have nothing to do with this feud I, right they're gonna push these guys you know right out the door they've already kind of broke trey off a little bit where trey's this great singles guy and then he goes back to being real silly with the rascals so which i was surprised that i thought dez was going to be the singles guy out of that group because dez was a single guy before they brought the other two in yeah right and yeah. then and now trey is the guy who seems to be well he was getting a little a little bit of a uh, smoke with ace austin other than that that was like, you know, but he, but he's shown some stuff as a single, right? He's shown like yeah. some fire with his promos and stuff like that. But you're right though. Like with the Rascals, um, I, you know, they're good in the ring, but when you keep losing, it's like, why would we care? Why would we expect you to win? Right? Like they, they just keep showing us that you lose, you get title shots and you lose. Right. So why would we think you can do it? So, uh, yeah, I, uh, you know, similar to like what we we're talking about with like Willie Mack and with, you know, not so much Chris Bay. I think I talked myself out of Chris Bay, but, you know, definitely with like Willie Mack. It's like, at what point are they like putting you in the jobber box? There's a lot of black guys losing right now in the company during this. Uh, yeah, what the f of, man? All, of all times. <laughs> <laughs> of all of all the times to do oh it God. with everything going on right now. You know. Oh, come on. But, uh, wrestling. yeah. So. 
I don't know what to expect. I, I feel like they're going to break up the Rascals in, in some way, shape, or form. Uh, mm. it's, uh, they're, they're at the point where they just need individual runs. But, you know, when well, see, Dad- I, could also, I could also see them being tag team champions. I mean, I can't see them winning the title over, like, teams they clearly like more, like the Guns and the Good Brothers. But I can see any sort of situation where you have maybe a three-team match and they get an uh, unexpected roll-up. See, I, I want to see them as champions because I feel like their matches with the North have been – their first match with the North it was, like, last year. I was For me, that was, like, my match of the year. It wasn't talked yeah. about as a match of the year, but I was like, dude, this match is freaking amazing. Right. Um, but, yeah, man, they – they just don't have confidence in some of these teams. It's very clear. Uh, Speaking of the North, the North yeah. ran out at the end of the uh, at the end of the uh, MCMG Rascals match, and my first thought was, "It's good to see you guys. Where have you been?" Right? I mean, like <laughs> Ethan Page looking all skinny, and you know, I mean, like these guys. It was it was good to see the North, man. I got to be honest, it was really good to see those guys, and. Um, you know, and look, they 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 picked up right where they left off. You know, they they they're beating down the machine guns, and you know, then Ace Full Ace and Fulton came out, and then the Good Brothers came out, and I was like, oh man, like you know, they they got some uh some good teams here, and it, but I also thought to myself, well, like where's the Deaners and Triple XL, right? I'm like if everybody's just running out, right? Like why don't you run out, right? Like, right, right, might uh, as well. If, if everybody's staking their claim to the tag team championships, why aren't y'all running out here? So. That, They're not allowed that, to. That was weird. You know, last I, I I'll say before Slammiversary, I think they had two or three, four team matches that were like Triple XL versus Reno Scum, which I hate. Versus, you, you know, and I was like, what are they fighting for? They're fighting for nothing because I think Reno Scum Scum won, a, won one of the matches, and then Impact's Twitter was like, will they challenge for the tag titles next? I'm like, no, right? Because you won't let them. You know. <laughs> <Right>. um, <laughs> And, dude, this is another thing about the tag division, man. The Good Brothers' first match was against Reno Scum. Mm. dude. And I like Reno Scum a lot. I, I'm pretty cool with Thornstow, man. Um, but I, but th- this is my team. It's been my team because I was there when they debuted in Impact. I was there live. And I Wasn't just, I connected Shotzi with Wasn't Blackheart them. with them when they first came in? No, it was um, – the hell's her name? Uh, No. I'm, I'm gonna look, somebody. I'm going to look it up. Woman. I, yes, yes, yes. I'm going to look it up because this is going to drive me crazy. I'm just going to look up. GF, I know there's listeners right now like, it's so-and-so. Yeah, what, what was Global her name? Force. Christina Von Erie. Von Erie, yes. Von Erie, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, man, I couldn't think of her name. It would have worked if they would have just put those together, but they, they never never right. ran with it. But um, So my point was, Good Brothers' first match on television. It was the main event. It was against Reno Scum. And mm. I was like, man, this is, this is a nice little platform for Reno Scum to show that they can, they can really go. Right. They're, they're very underrated in the ring. And the match did not come off like a main event caliber match. Mm. And when they do that, I always know the, I just know the formula. When they have a match, it's the last match of the evening – Right, it's like damn near a squash match, or it's not as competitive mm. as it could have been. It means that there's a segment after the show, mm. um, and that's exactly exactly what happened. Like I, I totally saw it coming, but after the episode, I was actually kind of upset. I'm like, dude, they could have like really let Reno Scum and and the Good Brothers go at it, right? Um, and even the finish of the match was like just, I don't know. I was I was really disappointed with it. It was blah. It was blah. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was you know. blah. You don't want blah, right? Like, even if you're not doing anything big, you just don't want it to be blah. You want it to be memorable. And he got too much blah. Yeah. Dude, Josh Matthews called this match, by the way, an instant classic. The Rascals and – like, we're throwing around these words classic, <laughs> yeah. dream match, like, so loosely. Like, you get a classic yeah, match. Josh you Matthews, get a classic. Man. Yeah, man. I understand we want to sell stuff sometimes. It's like, hey, you know, but – right. Yeah, you know, I don't think anyone's talking about that match the next day. Right, we're yeah, talking no, about the, I, you know, I, I I watch, I go back and watch it again, but I, I did not see instant classic. No, dude, yeah. I I remember the Rascals losing a majority of the match. Um, yeah, I think so. I have oh. a question for you though. I have okay, a question for you. Okay, we're gonna veer 
away from our subject just a little bit. All right. You mentioned that you loved, and I can't get this out of my head, so I just got to ask you. You mentioned that you love these Bachelor-style reality dating shows, okay? <laughs> I need you to give me BQ's power rankings of your all-time top three to five Bachelor-style reality dating shows. Go. <laughs> All right. Put number, you on the spot. Okay. Number number five, uh, Average Joe's. This was, oh, okay. Okay. I remember that one. <laughs> that dude was like a construction worker, right? And right, like, right, right. And they thought he was rich. No, no, no. That was my next one. Joe Millionaire's number four. Oh, Joe Rankings. Millionaire. Okay. Average Joe was they had this hot girl come out, and she thought she was doing her Bachelor-style show, and all the guys were – nerds dorks like oh. none of them were attractive and they were trying to see if you know it was superficial like yeah 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 you, you know what i mean so yeah, um, that's a good one. and then then they threw a twist at the end where they added some models in there and yeah. she ended up picking <laughs> one of the good looking guys to of win. course <laughs> so number four average joe number i mean number five number four uh joe millionaire <laughs> and that's what you're talking about they told everyone he was a millionaire he was rich yeah. and then at the end he had to break it to the girl that he was he was broke. I make twenty five thousand dollars a year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, number three, love is blind. <laughs> oh, that um, was good. Yes, excellent. <laughs> you, you know, I'm gonna put Bachelor and Bachelorette in the same. So, um, mm. number two is gonna be Bachelor in Paradise, and then mm. number one is tied Bachelor Bachelorette. It's kind of the same thing. Okay. I had to tie it because I was I had six. Bachelorette and Bachelor in Paradise. Uh, the Bachelor in Paradise. I know people are pissed off right now. Like, get back to talking wrestling. But... <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Wasn't Kenny King on one of those? Kenny King was on it. He actually See? Impact Wrestling. Bring, he he bring did name back. drop Ring of Honor at one point. Uh, <laughs> so that was actually really cool. He was on Bachelor and Bachelor in Paradise. Dude, I got into these shows because my ex-wife, like when I was twenty years old, used to watch them. So yeah, now I'm still like you know twenty one years later still watching them. But uh. Yeah, no, in Paradise, they're all they're all on an island together and dating each other, and it's all, all the drama. only ones I've ever watched were the VH1 knockoffs, Flavor of Love, and whatever that one was that Ray J had. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Brett Michaels and all that. Yeah, yeah, I watched. It. So, and again, I know people are pissed off right now, so let, let's move on. They're like, dude, <laughs> to please, please stop talking about this. Uh, mm. We're gonna here's our last subject I want to talk about. Mm. Um, we talked about Moose and EC3 last week and we're not getting EC3 in the ring at all. And I'm thinking that's actually a really good thing because mm -hmm. it adds, adds mystery. Um, I've always said with uh, my examples were broken Matt Hardy and the, and the, uh, the shield when they first showed up, when they were doing a bunch of backstage stuff and promos, and they were mister mysterious and dark. It was working. The minute you put them in the ring, mm. that started wearing off a little bit. But when the minute you start putting a microphone in their hand in the ring, then they yeah. just started being everybody else, in my opinion. Like, mm. so I think it works that he's not being overexposed in the ring. He's not holding a microphone, talking to the camera. Like what he's doing is yeah. working for me. Uh, I think I think they're really building up to like can't wait to see him wrestle. He may not wrestle though, Bound for Glory for all we know. Right. But uh, what were your thoughts on this? Because I didn't see this part of the show. I saw half of it. Um, I just I just missed the last thirty minutes of the show. I got to catch up with well, it. Like based on but, what you were saying, I totally agree. I like what they're doing. I like the style that they're telling the story in. I like that they're doing these you know movie style you know segments and. It's all about like, you know, Moose trying to chase down EC3, try to stop him from destroying the TNA title. They can stretch this out all the way to Bound for Glory. And whenever Moose finds EC3 and stops or doesn't stop him from destroying the TNA title, that doesn't have to be the end of this. You know what I mean? That could just be the, the next step to get us towards a match at Bound for Glory. And I think if that's the case, then like, you know, EC3 – you want to talk about like redefining yourself. That would be like a, a mission accomplished, right? Um, if, if he can come in and not wrestle a match for two months, but have it be the, it will be the most anticipated match on the card. And 
you know, I'm pretty sure what they're trying to do. I, 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 I can't say for sure, but if I had to guess, I think that they are still, you know, hoping that Bound for Glory will be in front of fans in some capacity. Um, you know, I don't know how much is going to change in the next two months. You know, they may have to take it to Fight Island to go right. <laughs> be in front of people. But, um, but you know, it, it, you know it, it could be possible. It certainly would add something to the show. Um, but my question remains the same. Who's the heel here? Why are we supposed to cheer for EC3? You know, this week, Moose chases EC3. Um, the, the clues lead Moose to back to his old high school. And Moose goes back to his old high school. He sees his old high school coach. He's talking to him. And then the coach uh, says to him, Moose, always remember what I told you. And Moose is like, yeah, 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 play through the whistle. The coach is like, no, control your narrative. <laughs> You've been warned. Right? And then Moose right. is like, oh, no. And then And then – EC3's goons come out of nowhere and start trying to attack Moose. So, again, I'm like, yo, this is not, like, babyface behavior from ec three standpoint at all. So, I'm just, you know, questioning again, why are we supposed to cheer for EC3 here? You know what I mean? Like, we're certainly not supposed to be cheering for Moose. Moose is a jerk, you know, the jerk to end all jerks, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, that leaves EC3 as the babyface, but nothing he's doing is babyface. So, um, you know... I don't know. I don't know. But I like what they're doing, though. I like what they're doing. I just don't necessarily jive with, like, there has to be a good guy and a bad guy. There has to be. Another black be bad guy or bad guy. Another black guy looking like a fool on Impact Television. Another uh, black man looking like a fool on Impact <laughs> This is some, I'm going to call the Fritz Pollard Alliance, the ACLU, um, the, the NCAA, and um, – Everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to call the Nation of Domination. Yeah, okay? Jesse Jackson. And we're going to have a talk with you, uh, yeah. Scott DeMore. Okay? Y'all got to fix this. <laughs> this is nonsense. Yeah, I, th- I think the best thing they could do, though, is keep them off television right now. And, and it, But I got to say, though, I've complained about this in the past, and they're doing a little bit better. The music in the background mm. of these segments it sounds so bad. Like, it's better now. It's it's better now. Like they used to play the theme song from the last set of tapings before yeah. Slam Reverse. They used to play that in the background all the time, and it was like making my ears bleed. I yeah. just wanted to light myself on gasoline, throw myself out the window. Like I was, <laughs> it was driving me nuts. Jeez. And uh, I actually put a message to Impact Wrestling. I was like, please stop. Um, it's okay. We're gonna bring it up the next meeting, whatever. But I was like, please stop playing that song. Um, and now they have a better theme, and it plays in the background. It's not as loud, but Okay, dude. Dumb, some of the music they choose for this, these, these kind of cinematic backstage stuff, like, dude, is so bad. Mm. I, I, um, I, so as 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 a, as a uh, production element, I don't mind it. I don't mind it because I think it's just another thing you can do to make your product look different from wwe yeah true. and i think it's it's okay i think you can always select better music right uh but i just the idea of just just having the music i think it is a good idea i used to love the way that ecw tv would end their show where it would be like everybody would just kind of go around and like cut their promos on you know where they are and what's coming next in whatever it is that they're that they're doing at the time and those were always, they were like set to music. And um, I just thought that was like a really great way to end the show. You know what I mean? Because it was like, you know, we're, we're telling you, you know, like full out and on, um, you know, what we're doing and why you need to care about what we're doing going forward. I, you know, I, I really like that. And then again, like adding the music was another really great element to that. And so in, in a case like this, in any case where I think you can use music to make it a good fun like vibrant part of the show like you know what i mean music is great man like if you use the right music right but like yeah um like rob van dam has like atlanta stripper music and, Dude, like, i love that theme I'm and sorry. like I, i'm like yo does this fit rob van dam? it fits katie forbes it doesn't fit but, him but i like it, it yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah it's like boom 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 <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's all about the right music. Uh, man, when they did that Sammy Callahan Ken Shamrock match or the outside, and it was playing the, 
I kept trying to whistle, but my mouth is so dry right now. <laughs> yeah, like the old west. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My mouth's super dry right now. I can't whistle. Yeah. Oh my god. I was like, what are they doing? But but I was told that they've tried to listen to these segments back without music, and it doesn't sound right. I don't think they have the same quality audio equipment that some of the bigger companies have to where it you know cancels Probably out around a lot of the sound around them. There's not echo, you know. So yeah. I mean, I get it. Well, you remember the the Twitch special they were shooting on Josh Matthews' iPhone, so <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that's <laughs> classic climbs, classic times. <sighs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop one more topic here actually before mm. before, we, before we drop this out, dude. I, so Taya's wrestling uh, Tasha Steeles, and um, I'm thinking to myself like, man, they were just teasing. I think we talked about this a little bit last week. They were just teasing these knockouts tag team championships returning. And now it's like the furthest thing from, I mean, there's, and there was buzz behind that rumor. You know what I mean? And now it's, it's not even remotely teased. Um, And it made me think like shame on you impact. If this was, if this was like the aces and eights tease where, where they're not really coming back. It was just like, how can we uh, throw them off the scent of who's going to be at slam anniversary, which I still think that story is kind of weird because Dino D'Lo Brown called up his homies looking for help and they never showed right. up. So it's not really a good look. Uh, but now I'm thinking about the knockouts tag team titles. Like when they didn't happen to slam anniversary, I was like, they're going to happen at bound for glory. And they're clearly yeah. not building up towards that right now. <clears throat> so uh, do you think we're still going to get these? Or do you think this was a, a tease for, what we could see at slam anniversary because now it's like there's still the pairings you know what i mean but it doesn't feel no one's competing for anything clearly right um i i don't know if they're coming right now um i think that a lot of things were up in the air leading to slam anniversary and so i think that they teased a lot of stories and left a lot of things open-ended right and and they, they had to get that shot up like ec3 has even said himself when they did the thing on Impact where Moose won the match and then EC3's music played. He hadn't signed or agreed with them at that time. And, um, you know, I think similarly with a lot of those teases that they did for who might be coming to Slammiversary, I think they were just, you know, throwing things out there to see, you know, what, what, what type of irons they can put in the fire. Um, I think that, you know, maybe things fell through a Bully Ray at the last moment. Um, you know, uh, you know, Michael Elgin and his whole situation, you know, the whole Team Canada 2.0 could have been a thing. Oh, yeah, you know, I like forgot all a, about that. a lot of things that were, you know, like were, were suspected or, or, or people hoped might have might have come to be. And I think that all those things were like possibilities, but they had to secure the people that were actually coming. And I, I and I, I said this, like very early on in that tease process, I thought they had the Good Brothers secured. I thought they had EY secured. And I thought everything else was TBD. And um, and sure enough, you know what I mean? Like stuff just never quite materialized. Now we'll hear one day, you know, one day Don Callis will do an interview on Talk is Jericho and he'll talk about who was and wasn't, you know, signed to come in for Slammiversary and all that stuff. Yeah. But <clears throat> along those same lines, I think, part of the things that they were planning was potentially bringing back the knockouts tag titles. And I think with all they had going on at slam anniversary, I think they just didn't have a place to squeeze it in. Now, looking at what they're doing with the knockouts right now, they got, you know, Rosemary and Taya doing the love angle and they got, um, you know, the, the Deanna Perrazzo, uh, Kylie Ray, you know, they're kind of on a collision course right there. And then they're also doing Jordan and Tennille Dashwood. And I'm like, yo, that's three separate solid knockout stories that they got going on. So with all of that, I don't think there's any plans for knockouts tag team titles right now. Um, but I definitely think that it's something that was planned. I think they've just gotten away from it and they can always come back to it because they have, you know, Havoc and Nevaeh, like they're not going anywhere. They have Tasha Stills and Kiera Hogan and Tasha Stills was being one of the most talked about acts on that show leading up to Slammiversary. But again, just with everything they've been doing, they've kind of gotten away from her. And, um, 
you know, we'll see. We'll see, you know, what's to come um, for the knockouts tag teams. But I think that's something they can always come back to. Like, it's nothing to heat that up when you're, you know, kind of running on E. Um, but sneakily, they have, you Ooh. know, potential for some really good matches coming up with uh, Jordan and Tanil Dashwood and with Deanna Perrazzo and Kylie Ray. So, you know, I'm talking about, like, some high-quality, you know, yeah. matches that, like, wrestling fans who love leg slaps and 100 kickouts – are going to love. Like, I think they got some good knockouts matches on deck. And so um, so I see no reason to get away from those things, right? Right. And so I think that the knockouts tag team titles would definitely just be on hold. And, again, there's no reason to rush that. But what you don't want to do is you don't want to let a great talent like Tasha Stills um, and, 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 and a blossoming talent like Kiara Hogan, you don't want to let them just get lost in the shuffle. You want to find ways to keep them involved, keep them on TV and, you know, keep them doing stuff. So um, now, but they've already, they've had them match up against Havoc and Nevaeh as much as they possibly can. Yeah. So they got to find something else for them to do. So, um, so, you know, I'm interested to see what's to come. And listen, if, if you're the writer, the producer of a TV show, it's your job. You have good talent, find a way to get them on the show. Yeah. And those, those are, those two are, up and comers like uh tasha and uh tasha another black girl that lost on this show but um you know her and kira oh, man. yeah man kira is like the most improved player of this mm. this company man like mm. oh my god um she's just just doing such a better job than when she first showed up and then tasha steals i don't know if you watch nwa man but she was a, a baby face in nwa like oh, um dude she was like the third banana for um yeah. Sierra, Sienna and, and uh, Allison Kay and then her partner like she was just this third banana um, dude, it, it wasn't working at all uh, Impact is killing it with with the presentation of her I still think you can t- pair up Tennille and uh, 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 the hell, uh, Katie Forbes now if you're doing a mm. photography type of thing you know what I mean I think it can work I'm actually intrigued to see I'm not intrigued to see this whole damn doc, to- whole damn talk show at all um but i'm intrigued with um like katie forbes is kind of a big part of the storyline right to where it's almost teasing that sammy would bring in a female but at the same time it wouldn't make any sense but it's like the way that you know she kept interfering and even even josh kept saying oh she keeps interfering it's almost like they're telling a story like he's going to have something to counter at but then again he beat rvd that match that so that's like the problem i have with storytelling right. sometimes it's just like why are they still freaking feuding because sammy won right so what why are you saying oh i'm gonna i got other plans for your talk show why well, do you even think, care you know most of us know that you know he is in a relationship with with havoc yeah and so that could be like a natural a natural kind of combination there yeah right you had you had Havoc and uh, Havoc and Sammy against RVD and Katie and uh, can Katie Forbes wrestle by the way? Yeah, dude, she can wrestle absolutely. Yeah, what man. she does is like, I mean, it, so Impact is very character based. It's a very character based show, which I like. I do like that about it. But in the case of like a Katie Forbes, right? Like, I don't know if she can wrestle, right? Like, uh, I take your word for it, right? But I haven't <laughs> seen her, like, do anything that resembles, you know, good wrestling yet. She did a whole lot of butt shaking, but, like, not a lot of, like, you know, wrestling, you know what I mean? So um, so I don't know if she can wrestle, but if she can, then there could be something fun on the way with, you know, uh, because we know, you know, RVD can go. We know Sammy Callahan go. Such an underrated guy, man. Sammy Callahan is so underrated. Yeah, man. And, uh so, like, he can pull a good match out of anybody. He got the only good matches out of Brian Cage and Impact. Yes. <laughs> that is. He got the only good matches out of Brian Cage and Impact. And, um, and, uh, and, um, oh my God, what else? What else was, oh, oh, and Tessa Blanchard. He made Tessa Blanchard look like a world champion. And so, yeah. uh, Sammy Callahan is great, man. Like, give that guy his due. I think that, you know, that could actually be a fun thing if, if they end up doing uh, Sammy and Havoc versus Katie and RVD. Yeah, that's that's interesting. I uh, Maybe a mixed tag match or something bound for yeah. glory. Because at this point, you can't just have them wrestle one-on-one again. Yeah. You know, uh, you know I'm, I'm kind of wishing I was still paying for the Impact Plus app right now because I kind of want to go watch. Uh, oh, my God. Remember when they did Angelina Love and Davey Richards? 
against Alicia and Eddie Edwards. Yes. That was good. I that love was that was my favorite match of that. I all card, I wanted dude. that I wanted that uh Eddie and Davey feud to be for the for the X Division title. I was like that I was like that just would be so good if this was for a title. But you know. Man, that's, that's the impact plus flash back in the day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they haven't been doing those lately, huh? Yeah, they, they've kind of gotten away from that. They got a lot on their plate, man. I hope I it's know. permanent, man. <laughs> there was a couple episodes they had Wrestle House and the flashback. I was like, yo, are we going to actually have the actual episode air at any time here? You know what? I, I, I think as long as you're doing good content, like good stuff we can talk about, give me and you something to talk about. Even like no matter what it is, I don't care. You don't have to do, you can do very little in-ring wrestling, but like just make an interesting show to talk about. Something that people can consume and tweet about and be like, yo, look at this wild thing that happened. You know what I mean? A dilapidated yeah. boat. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just give us something to talk about. I think that's what matters. Yeah. With that silence, I think uh, we're gonna wrap this one up. Yeah, it's. Uh, I want to keep going. We, yeah, there. yeah, yeah, yeah. But but look at what we did for the people. Okay, we are up. You know, BQ, you got work in the morning. I got work in the morning. Uh, yeah. I actually missed my workout for you people. Okay, I know you can't tell, but I am a bastion of health and fitness. Okay, <laughs> right, like, and I sacrificed missing my workout so that we could bring you this podcast excellence. And I You're sacrificed welcome. the uh, Clippers versus Mavericks game that's going I'm on. I'm watching it right now. The Clippers Are you really? By, by, by 13 right now. And I there hate we the go. I'm a Lakers fan. Whoa. Yeah. Oh, my God, dude. <laughs> yeah. I have to cancel this <laughs> podcast. <laughs> oh. <laughs> knife to the heart knife to the it's heart okay. it's okay man it's okay it's okay. It's okay i mean it makes you feel better i'm a jets fan too so i know true misery uh you know i i, I vote i root for a team that will never win much like your clippers <laughs> yeah, but hey no no this is this is the year this is the year but yeah man I, I i put on facebook today i wish i had espn the ocho so i could catch the chargers game this weekend oh yeah man that, that is rough man that is like oh yeah that's right well, because you're from California, so that makes sense. I was like, why? Who, why would anybody be a Chargers fan? <laughs> All right, man. We're gonna we are gonna wrap this one up. Good good time. Good talking to you, and uh, we'll do this again next week. Um, yes, sir. With the next episode. Everybody, you know, show show us love. You know, make sure you share this, retweet it, tell a friend to tell a friend, bring them into the conversation, and make sure you tell them how amazing that we are. Uh, follow me on Twitter at TW Talk About. There we go. I can dig it. All right, yeah. folks, we will talk to you next week. Thanks for tuning in. We're out. Peace.